Howdy, fish keepers. This is uh, Danny with Danny Aquatics coming back at you with part two on setting up the beginner's uh, long 20 gallon. So, everything seems to be cycled. I had put a, uh, a small convict in here, and he's been here for at least two and a half days, and he's like he's doing pretty good. So, he hasn't died, so the water's pretty stable. Uh, sustainable, I should say. Uh, let's see here. All right, we've got a little bit more lighting. Uh, I got the filter going. We had a cycled filter that we put in there. So I'm still thinking of adding just a little bit more, maybe about another half inch of substrate sand. Because I've never really done too much planted aquarium stuff. Uh, I ordered some uh, plants from uh, uh, Aquarium Co-op. And we're going to get some uh, java moss and uh, some... What are some of the other plants? It's a couple other plants. Uh, one's called an octopus something. I'm not sure what they call it. I'm not too familiar with uh, live plants. I usually deal with plastic plants. So we're going to probably do some uh, some landscaping, some decor, maybe some stones in there, some pieces of wood, some uh, driftwood, some heavy driftwood, and then attach the uh, java moss to that. And uh, what I'm looking at is putting about 15 or 20 uh, rubby nose uh, tetras in here. They're really neat. They have a little red nose and then they have the black and white tail. And uh, I think that'll look good for now. So I went to Walmart earlier and I got me, if needed, maybe because of the, of the central heat, I mean the air conditioning stuff, it might get too cold in here. I went and got a uh, little heater. It's, it's rated for 10 to 20 gallons, is uh, inner pet. So they were only like $18. So I'm going to try this for now. Just to have a heater in there, and I do have just the filter in there, the sponge filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this Aquatech. It's the 10 to 20 gallon, and I like these because the actual pump is underneath the water. So the power goes out. I have a few of these that I have on some of the other 29 gallon tanks in the fish room and stuff, and you can turn the power off and you turn it back on, and they come on automatically. Uh, I like marine land. I'm not trying to dish marine land, but their motor is inside uh, on the outside of the aquarium and It does good as long as you don't drain the water Well, I know when I do water changes a lot of times it has a hard time siphoning the water back up But I've noticed if you let when you're doing the water change you let that water get to where it needs to be in the water level on the uh, marine lands and it will prime itself. So if you lose power, I've, I've practiced with it, doing it several times, and on the Marine Land 400, and it does, it does come on by itself. So there's a chance that it doesn't, you know, but that's why I have backup air supplies also with bubblers that come on automatically. But we're gonna try and put this in here. So I'm gonna have to remove the light, make a cutout on that uh, plastic, deflector, that quarter inch material that they use for greenhouses, and um, we'll uh, cut that out and uh, we'll see if it fits, so stay with me. Alright, we're going to go ahead and open this one up, see what we got in here. This is where I get some some idea of the measurements I'm going to have to do to cut that, that top. So this stuff here, this is some really nice stuff. And it's kind of inexpensive if you can buy this like small section, like four foot by four foot section. But if you buy the big sheet, it's about ninety-five dollars, the four by eight sheet. But it lasts a long time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna probably cut out this corner over here to uh, make room for that uh, that little filter. So let's see what we got here. And most important, it comes with the instructions that I don't use. Let's see what we got in here. Hopefully all the parts are in here. 
don't need that. Don't need my rubber band. Alrighty, I guess everything is on the inside. And like I said, you can see that these little pumps are in here. Sometimes I have trouble with one of them. It's it comes apart here if you want to do the cleaning, the little motors in here, and it's hard to snap them on sometimes. Sometimes you have to remove the whole thing off the aquarium and snap this on. But this is removable. It's got a rubber seal underneath here, and you just twist it and it locks into place. And let's see, let's open this booger up. It comes with your little extension. And it should be enough for this little aquarium. And uh, all you do is you, you got your little screen. You snap that on in place. And you can telescope it in, if your aquarium is a little bit deeper. And then you have a little simple cartridge that it comes with. I'll probably use this for now until I uh, go look for some uh, sponge that I have put up. This one comes with a little filter floss and some carbon inside. So I don't really care too much right now for the carbon because I don't want to take away too much from the water. But I'm going to use this just for demonstration. And it actually has a slot for two in here. If you look, it's got two grooves. So you can actually put two different things in here if you wanted to. You could add two filters like that back to back and then put one back here. So with that space that it has, I'm going to probably do that and then put maybe a, a, a nice sponge filter back in here or even a little bag with some uh, media and that'll serve for some uh, biological bacteria build up in there. So, and you do have a mechanical sponge filter that's at the bottom in here. It's kind of hard to see. It's just a little square piece this is where the water deflects off of as it's being pumped up. Well, that thing's hard to get to. It's coming. There we go. See, it's just a little, a little square cube, and it fits right in here in this corner. And you just push it to the bottom, and then you have your discharge from the pump into your filter housing, and this little lip goes on the little rubber seal here, and. This will discharge into your mechanical sponge filter and that'll catch some of that debris there, the bigger stuff, and then it overflows to the back into this section here. And I'm going to have another filter back in here. And then you have your carbon, your little polyfill. So we'll close that up. And then all you got to do is just snap this on some way like this. And it should give me enough space. It'll be pretty low for this one since it is a 20 long. And I guess it could be modified if you had to shorten it. Uh, I might be able to use that instead. Use just the, uh, the collapsible part. And that should give me enough to get down in there. So, And that should do it, guys. So we'll put that in here. Let me take this rubber band off. I have this little keeper with this cord. Bear with me, I can't see. I'm getting too old. I need better glasses. Alright, so we're going to put this on the back side, and I'm going to have to make room for that so at least three inches. So this is going to have to be moved out enough. I didn't take that into consideration. I wasn't planning to use this, but now that I am, I'm gonna have to move this up a little bit, so bear with me. Alrighty guys, I got it secured. I am gonna go in the middle. It'll work better there. And I had to shorten it because this aquarium is actually a little short. So I'm not gonna use the piece that it ratchets through. I used the insert piece and then I cut off about two inches. What's that piece there? But I cut it a little short so I don't want that little mesh filter to be on the substrate. So I cut about two inches off and shortened it. This way uh, it'll still do the pickup, but not as, not as far to the bottom. I don't like them being too low. Let's plug this in real quick. Let's see how it comes out. Okay, see? That's what I like about these little filters.
it shows you all the parts that it comes with. But uh, Aquatech from Walmart, the 10 and 20 gallon. This thing works pretty good, so I, I've always I have they haven't failed me yet, so they work for HOBs. They work good, especially for the small aquariums. So we'll uh, measure this out, try to center it, and then I'm going to cut the uh, plastic cover. That way, we don't get no critters going in here. And all I'll do is I'll just line it up, mark it, and. Uh, I need to put also, we brought the inner pit heater that we're going to install as well. So let me open this up, get this pulled out and situated. For this room stage, it gets a little cool in here, and I don't want it to get where it's too unbearable for the fish as well. And I want it to be able to maintain at least 80 degrees. attach the little rubber pads that it comes with, the little suction cups, and it comes with two clips that you can hook up to the little rubber feet, and this is going to snap onto your heater, and then you just put the suction cup against it by glass. And this, these come with a, a setting where you can adjust the variable temperature. And right now it's probably like at 79 or so. So we're going to go with that right there where it's at. So you can have it set up where it's a bit of visual. So you can actually see it through the aquarium. I'll just run to the other side of here. I'm going to have to probably run another outlet. Maybe a little six pack or four pack to uh, be able to hook this up. And this is just setting up some of the hardware that you're going to need for a beginner tank. And there is some aquariums that you actually, some fish do not need heaters. Uh, uh, some, some fish actually prefer cooler, kind of like your goldfish and there's some other fish that you can buy that don't really require a heater, not unless, I mean, your house doesn't get in the 30s or 40s, you might need to get one. So this thing here, we're going to put it in this corner. We'll put this in place right there. Get my towel. And that ought to work. It's below the water level. It's not too, too high. Let's plug that thing in real quick. Let's see. Alright, we're in. And I like these also because they give you a little light indicator that uh, it's on. And you can, I don't know, you can see it from there. It gives you a little orange glow light. Let me see. Let me pull this off real quick so you can take a look at this. It's on. It's a little light orange light, so it's working good. Alrighty, guys. Let's cut this plastic out, the lid, and we'll fit all that stuff into place. Alright, guys. We got it centered. The aquarium is actually 30 inches, so we're going to set that exactly at 15 inches of center. So we're going to cut, this thing is 8 inches wide, so we're going to make a mark at 11 and 19 and that should give us enough space on the outside cutout. So let me mark this real quick. Mark it at 19. This side we're going to make a little notch like we did this side to allow 
room for the, the cable to go in on this side as well. So let me mark these off real quick. We can get this cut open. Like I said, two and a quarter. I might go two and three eighths. Straight edge. That way. This way. Okay. And this is going to be what we're going to cut out right there. Now I cannot find my little cutter. I don't know where it went. So I'm going to scar this with a knife. Just to get in here. Yeah, I can. That other one is razor sharp, so it makes it a lot easier to scar. Okay. Now to cut these these sides here, I'm going to use this little little hacksaw. It cuts really cool. on this side for the extension cord. I'm going to go about half inch both ways. And that should allow plenty to get that cord in there. And that's it. Just a little, little corner notch. Try to see if this thing will fit. Voila, perfect fit. And this is the top lid with a little two notch out in the corners for utility wires or whatever you're going to be running in there. And a little cover for there. And what I might do is I need to put a little handle here. Just a little nighty with a little uh, piece of or some double sided tape or you can even use uh, some silicone just a little piece half inch by half inch maybe two inches long to use for a little handle lift this up to do your you know, and it, I mean it's it's a good water flow so alrighty guys that's gonna be it for today on this tank and uh, we'll be finishing this up with another session part three with the uh, the core putting uh, some uh, putting some rocks in here and putting some uh, maybe a couple pieces of, or just one piece of uh, driftwood and should be Monday I should be getting the, the plants the Java moss and uh, the Java ferns so we'll be putting that in here and I think I ordered a couple of uh, some somewhat octopus plants I'm not sure what they're called <laughs> so all right guys thanks for watching and Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll get back with y'all with another video, part three. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.